Welcome back. And, uh, John, you have your own show over at Republic Radio, 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, Monday to Friday. Can you give us a summary of some of the show topics you've covered in the past week or two? And uh, if they go over to Republic Radio, they can actually listen to them or are in the archives. What are some of the main shows you've, you've covered lately? Well, uh, Professor, <laughs> excuse me, Professor McCann has become a weekly guest on my show. And, and, of course, we talk about matters involving astrophysics and related topics. Always fascinating. Uh, this morning I was talking about, um, briefly before we brought Ann Morrison on board, uh, it appears that a contrived economic collapse is becoming ever more clear to be a reality. Um, and, of course, with Ann Morrison today, we were talking about uh, all these seismic events and uh, related topics going on around the world. Yeah, another contrived financial event. So let's look at some mathematics, because I tell people math is a subject that kids should never skip in school. They need to teach it better. They need to get people to get excited about it, because the, if you talk about uh, math is, the, in a sense, the queen of science. They refer to it as the queen of science. And uh, the king can't get away with those things without the queen approving it. So without math, whether statistics or astrophysics or chemistry, you need math. Same with politics. The math of this is that they set up the fiscal cliff as a way of dealing with an overspending government that would did illegal wars, that uh, also had the pork barreling so that the jet that could cost $40 million cost $240 million. Uh, Basically, uh, all the kind of payoffs to all the, the political contributions because of crony capitalism is so bad in the district of criminals. And it's sucking us dry. It's like having a giant uh, blood-sucking monster on us, uh, on the body politic of the, of the population. So 40%, for example, of the value of all of our good services and intellectual property is sucked away by the Fed Reserve and by this giant blood-sucking monstrosity called the government. The government's sucking us dry. And the problem is the body politic of society is about to hit the wall. The fact is if they tax 100% of the income of people making over 250000 you would only keep the government going for a matter of days. Uh, the real problem is that neither Obama wants to reduce entitlements nor uh, the um, Republicans want to raise taxes, but that's not the real issue. They need to write off the debt. They need to say, oh, this $18 trillion, this is all false and bogus. We right. need to have state banks and we need to have a federal uh, U.S. Reserve Bank that doesn't have any foreigners involved. And we don't need to feel committed to send trillions of dollars to Europe that won't manage their own budget. It's ridiculous. Well, Dr. Uh, Bill, if they repudiate, if they repudiate the debt... They'll never sell another treasury bond for a century. So <laughs> obviously they can't do that. They need some mechanism to make it look like an outside foreign enemy. Perhaps Iran would be a good choice, or maybe North Korea, uh, had computer hackers destroy our banking community from without. Uh, and that, that would be pushing the reset hmm. button to start over again. Well, there's going to be a reset one way or the other. It'll happen, as they say, it's going to either happen good or bad. And, and a good analogy would be, I remember years ago I actually saw a remarkable incident. I saw a person that fell 10,000 feet. Literally, their chute didn't open, their parachute. They, they literally aimed themselves and then bounced off the branches of a tree, rolled off a roof, and landed on bushes and only broke about six ribs, had a few compression fractures of the spine, didn't get paralyzed, or even get a serious cervical or neck injury, and no spinal cord damage. Now, we're going to crash either way, but we've got to figure out how we're going to crash. What I suspect needs to happen is we need Glass-Steagall back up, we need to have banks in every state, and we need a parallel a credit system where the states can start getting their own credit so they can get their house in order, whether it's backed by gold or just by the productivity of the state. We also need to start putting the brakes on the federal government, either illegal wars, crazy spending, and trying to buy elections. We can see that Obama did buy this election, yeah, and he also did executive orders, uh, which should have been through the first two years of his term when he had a clear mandate to set up rapid immigration. When this group came to the White House a few days ago and said they wanted to have him pass an executive order to stop discrimination, that's something that the Congress needs to address, not an executive order from the commander-in-chief. You know, this is like trying to set up Obama as an emperor, and it's really dangerous. It is. Um, it is absolutely dangerous, and, and we're establishing a lot of very dangerous precedents with this president. Yeah, it's a very bizarre kind of arrangement uh, and your comments on this because I think post-election we have the electoral college needs to be reformed We I don't believe that this secession movement and I, I know that uh, Joel Skousen has written on this is, is, is really valid uh, people need to realize what you need to do is you need to reform the banking structure and uh, 
what you want to do is you're going to have to repudiate the debt. I mean, that, uh, you know, I don't care if the U.S. sells treasury bonds to other countries. We don't need it. We're sitting on mountains of oil and gas that the world needs. If we simply even had the export licenses, which Obama won't give, to uh, these U.S. companies, we could sell enough oil and gas that our debt would just go poof. And then we wouldn't even need to worry about repudiating debt. It would just disappear. Uh, but Obama is just standing in the way of uh, America, literally a new renaissance in America, or he wants to pork barrel it so that he can pass up more goodies to guarantee that either he or a proxy will get reelected for a third term, and they're now talking about that. Uh, your comments, John. Well, the, the people, many of the entities that the debt is owned to, owed to have tremendous control over uh, this country uh, by hook or by crook. So... Uh, I don't. I don't believe it's going to be a very easy thing to do. And the Chinese, of course, own a huge amount of this debt. And uh, yeah. but they, they also owe us money. Did they? They owe us money too, though. I actually had an expert on a few months ago that showed that they actually owe us quite a bit more, double the money that we owe them in terms really? of trillions of dollars loaned, loaned actually before the communist revolution but they say they repudiate the debt the fact is that the precedent is except for maybe royal several hundred years ago that all modern nations still own the debt and the Chinese owe us tri- many trillions of dollars in fact quite a bit more than they, we still owe them and I know there's interlocking world debt but people say oh we owe it to the Chinese our debt is not measured in a couple trillion that the Chinese have it's in hundreds of trillion we're talking about probably you know total off the book debt is more like 1.4 to 1.5 quadrillion dollars. That's 1,400 to 1,500 trillion. So the Chinese debt is a little itty bitty tiny fraction. It's just a, it's for public consumption. So we allow things like the Idaho trade zone given to the Chinese, or we pass over 90 percent of the oil uh, to the Chinese company, the China Oil Company, that's now the fifth largest oil and gas uh, petrochemical refiner in the world that didn't exist before Gulf War II. Uh, I think it's part of the game of the globalists to try to have, set up a dialectic so they can manipulate us into a position like Clinton did, transferring supercomputer weapon systems and advanced military technology so the JL-17 and the Chinese uh, you know, stealth jets now are virtually a combination of the F-22 Raptor and F-35. To me, this is obscene. Everything from space technology is like a big uh, bazaar. Hey, Clinton said, come on down and we'll give you all this stuff. It's like, what? You know, the globalists basically, even in the, back in the, after the Second World War, gave nuclear technology and materials and shuttled it through Fairbanks, Alaska, to the Russians when they couldn't didn't have enough nuclear materials to make a bomb. That's so right. uh, I, I, what I see happening is the globalists basically are, are literally raping and pillaging us and giving our technology and intellectual property to these characters. And Obama is continuing in that vein, which is, you know, he's not the first, but he's probably the worst. Uh, and the next term of Obama isn't really so much you know marxist as it's a combination a weird combination of marxism sunni muslim islam and uh, more than ever just corporatism just global corporatism and bankerism where the bankers own everything and the population basically becomes a few uh, 21st central uh, scientific feudal serfs they want us to all be serfs no fire private property no land ownership uh, no income, devalue our currency, and I think there is going to be a, a bank holiday. It may be short, but you know, guarantee one of their schemes they can do to make the debt go bye bye is to simply devalue the currency, maybe to one one and four. So your dollar is worth twenty five cents. And I'm it's hearing forty percent, a forty percent devaluation, yeah. leaving up at sixty. Yeah, that's what I think. I think so. I think something like that is very probable. But remember, we've already had a 40% devaluation in, in effect of the currency in the last four years of Obama's administration. If well, you have value in your house, they want more. yeah, or, yeah, we, they want another 40%, which means the dollar will be worth maybe 20 cents on the dollar it was in 2008. Right. Well, I now have a confidential source inside the banking community, and, and uh, I'll be getting weekly reports from this individual. Yeah, so in other words, I'll, get I'll your get food, it. your water, your bullets, because when social chaos hits, when the so-called entitlements that Obama promised all the people that wanted to be at the table, guess what? You can be at the table, but Obama's table, there's very little on the table.
Welcome back. And, uh, John, you mentioned a very important statement on the break there, and I have my sources from Western Journalism. We had uh, Carl Gallops on last week, and uh, our source inside the White House. Tell us what you heard from someone inside. Well, my, uh, my source is inside the Special Operations Community this Tuesday, a couple of days ago. I was told that the, the whole setup in uh, Benghazi was to have our ambassador be kidnapped. That was the plan, to have him kidnapped, uh, a contrived kidnapping, if you will, or, yeah. uh, and then exchange him for the blind shake. Uh, and apparently these American uh, former Navy SEALs uh, that were not part of the program, they just knew our guys were in trouble. They thought they were going to the rescue, and they ended up gumming up the whole works and, and uh, stopping the kidnapping, which became uh, obviously the death of the uh, ambassador. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Well, that's what's crazy. That, yeah. and it flies yeah. in the face. We, our, our American policy is to never, ever negotiate uh, with terrorists, and that would set a very, very dangerous precedent, especially in light of them having set up and contriving it from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, here's what I think also, additional details. I had our sources for Western Journalism and Carl Gallops who did the video with Jerry McLaughlin and Clean TV. What they what really happened there was this was to make uh, Obama grandstand before the election like the uh, Rambo, you know, in the Situation Room with the killing, quote, taking the shot, as he says, Obama says, taking the shot against Osama bin Laden, who was long dead years before. And uh, what they want to do is look good to the Muslims by giving them a blind shake, look good to the local people, say, hey, look what we did. Also get rid of a uh, so-called ambassador, and it's funny they call him an ambassador because he's really basically a go-between, making sure all the equipment material went to 90, 95% of these al-Qaeda terrorists that were attacking Syria and killing citizens and military inside Syria doing regime change. And I think what happened is that uh, Ambassador Stevens is getting nervous because they're giving all these weapons to these Al-Qaeda guys. He knows they're taking over the whole area. He said it in his cables. The people took him to the emergency department. Now, if I was a terrorist, I'd light him with gasoline or I'd shoot him in the head. I sure as hell wouldn't be taking him to an emergency department because no, no, he's dying that, of smoke that's inhalation. totally out of character. Totally right. So, and, and Petraeus had this Damocles sword hanging over him until after the election that you better say the party line. So he comes out with a statement yesterday, which I find pretty disgusting, that he knew all along it was a terrorist activity and didn't know who changed the talking points in the White House. So, of course, then they're going to try to chase that rabbit trail. The real issue is... Petraeus himself would probably have communications directly with uh, with Obama if he knew this was the situation, and Petraeus and his his, his staff yeah, and the CIA would have had direct personal action on whether or not they were going to deploy forces that could have been there in an hour. Because here's what happened. This is my kind of timeline analysis. Uh, what probably happened is. All these cables were going on for several months, including the hole blown in the wall that was big enough to let people through. Uh, Stevens is getting nervous, and he's inside. We got to we got to get rid of this brown shirt, our own guy, who's kind of getting nervous about the whole deal because this is a scam, right? Giving all these weapons right. to our so-called potential terrorists, uh, you know, not allies but enemies. And so they said, well, we'll exchange them, and we'll look good. And what happened? There were two special forces agents there that started to shoot back, and they didn't they weren't in on the loop. And so the guys that are, quote, working on this scam to, to, to uh, kidnap him decide, well, we're just going to come back and we're going to bring a mortar to the place. So they decided to mortar it when he was in the secure room dying of smoke inhalation and they eventually took him out of there. They brought him to the emergency department and it's most likely it's the same guys or affiliates of them that brought him to emergency and said, well, gee, this guy's dying. We want to help him. He wasn't just local citizens. I guarantee it was part of the collective of people in the area that were working with al-Qaeda that were getting all these weapons because they were transshipping it through this so-called facility. This is not an embassy. This is a transshipment facility to gather weapons that they had in Libya and ship them to Syria and to Hezbollah, etc., in southern Lebanon. Exactly. Uh, Dr. Deagle, this is Alexander Bachman. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Alexander. Yeah. Just to interject for a second. Exactly. I mean, embassies, you have them in the capital city of Tripoli. Right? Yeah, you didn't have an embassy in Baghdad. Benghazi has been known as a pirate capital for 5,500 years. It's played, you know, in southern Mediterranean, you go back to ancient history, even before the, 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 the Greeks, it was known as the pirate capital of the southern Mediterranean. So, it's uh, the city of Tripoli, right? Yeah, yeah. So in Benghazi was known as the, as the capital of the pirates. The, but it's about the, the ritual pirate. killing of uh, the ritual killing. It's on, on uh, longitudinal, on parallel line 33, all right? Same as L.A., same as uh, north of uh, Jerusalem in Galilee. Uh, it's uh, parallel 33. That's why they do these killings, like in Dallas when they killed Kennedy. 
it's for a ritual ritual uh, purpose as well. Yeah, well, it's long ley lines, which are basically hyperdimensional lines because they they do this to have an, an effect in hyperspace, mm-hmm. which allows them to get psychic energy to do more evil. Uh, without getting into all the details of that. So, John, what do you think of that uh, thesis? Does that make any sense? Well, it makes perfect sense. It sounds like a, a B-grade movie out of Hollywood. Uh, yeah, and it's also they want to clear out General Allen, who was supposed to get the appointment for the commander. And by the way, both of these generals did a pretty good job, although uh, I think Petraeus kind of suffered from a little bit of narcissism, too, because he had what he called government in a box. So we would go in, and he would control the area, try to... You know, tell people everything that Al-Qaeda's gone. Don't worry if you're collaborating with us. They won't come back and kill you. Build schools and do things and then kind of leave. Well, that doesn't work very well. I call it, the, I call it government or government in a box. And they didn't have government even in Kabul. So why do they think that putting, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars in to do this on a temporary basis is going to get rid of the Pashtun and the Al-Qaeda and these armies that have never been defeated since Genghis Khan? I mean, it's just stupid. It doesn't yeah, work. Absolutely. I mean, it's like getting rid of cockroaches and say, well, just pick off one or two. We won't get the the vast army of cockroaches in the walls. Uh, I, doesn't well, I have this eerie feeling I'm going to throw by you guys. What if General Petraeus is the fall guy for the impeachment trial? Well, I think what will happen is that, uh, first off, Petraeus, his answers already are, are even more inconsistent now. The fact that he says he already knew it was uh, serious, how could he make, know that all these statements are coming out through the so-called U.S. United Nations Ambassador, you know, Rice, who's making these statements, and her answer was, well, these are just what they gave me. I'm thinking, well, then who gave him those updated uh, talking points? In either way, was it Valerie Jarrett? Was it Petraeus? I mean, who did it? And if he knew these were coming up, why didn't he come vote and, and Petraeus and correct them? Because this was a minefield, because they knew already they'd screwed up and not deploying troops there. They screwed up with a cover-up, and what was really going on there was something much more nasty. And it goes right up to the president, because he was going to get all the kudos if they exchanged uh, the now kidnapped ambassador for the blind shank. And that's what I hear from my sources, too, that Obama is on the hot seat. And it wouldn't surprise me if he gets impeached. Well, they could try, you know, but uh, ultimately they would, um, to not let uh, more information get out, they would even uh, go, I mean, his handlers, okay, the puppet masters, they'd go and sacrifice him, you know? Well, I think that uh, the, what I heard from my sources is that uh, the handlers are still extremely ticked off that he cut off the XL pipeline. In fact, uh, the globalists, and this is uh, also heard through Lindsey Williams, they wanted that pipeline done because they have a timeline when they want all this oil to come on board, which is about a year, year and a half from now, with Liberty Rig, the largest, deepest water rig in the world. It cost two billion dollars just to put it up there. The largest, deepest water rig in the, in you know the, basically Prudhoe Bay, which is like in the Arctic Ocean. Yes, I know. When this, comes, when this comes in, when this comes in, and the the oil and the gas and everything in America, we have so much more oil than the whole rest of the world. We'll be like the the Arabs of the North. I mean, this is ridiculous that we have any debt at all. So uh, you know, Obama's in the way, and the globalists are ticked off at him. And it wouldn't surprise me if they're going to try to take him down, even if he's quote elected or selected. You know, they pay their taxes, buying everything, they work hard, they don't get involved with crime. Welcome back, and I um, want to hear um, your comments, Anne, about this and about also the space weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, whatever else is happening. What's going on? Well, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we just had a tremendous explosion on the sun. We don't think it's going to affect the Earth, but uh, there are pictures of it on spaceweather.com. And oh. it is a uh, very... Uh, it, the sun may become more active. We've had very quiet solar weather for the last uh, five or six days. Now, the really? latest news on the, on the... Remember the Indianapolis explosion? The house that exploded and they caught the house next to it on fire, and then the spray, the uh, the uh, uh, other houses then were were uh, damaged by the blast shock wave or by flying debris. Yeah. Fourteen other homes. Right. Well, the latest news on that is they still don't know why. 
And well, you know, about a year or so ago, we had a, a we had a, a meteor shower, and we were suspicious that the meteor shower triggered off by striking a home. I think on the east coast. I think it was in Pittsburgh or somewhere on the east coast. Uh, about a year, year and a half ago, and uh, this may well be a gas explosion, <coughs> but you'd figure that you got to always start looking at these anomalous events because we are having a lot of meteor showers the last one. What's the latest one that's going on right now? It's the Taurus. It comes out of the constellation Taurus, the bull. And right. um, the strange thing about that is that the meteors are burning up at 1,000 feet instead of 100,000 feet. So people are seeing fireballs. Ah, okay. That's that's something that I'm sure that uh, that uh, Professor McKinney talked on your show, John, about the uh, the red hand of of uh, death that was seen at the time of ancient Egypt, at uh, the time of Moses. And it, Professor McKinney's been talking about this for the last few weeks, which is sulfur balls coming down from the sky from these uh, meteors crashing through the atmosphere at lower altitudes. Well, they, well nothing, like a, nothing like a chunk there. of rock going faster than the speed of sound to ruin your whole day. Yeah, 27,000 <laughs> to 35,000 miles an hour is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, anyway, yeah, there's, ahead, some 30, uh, there's some 30 investigators continue working on to determine what caused the explosion. But uh, the news on it has dropped to zero. I mean, you really have to search the news now to find out anything. Uh, you know, it's just dropped off the grid. Part of the problem, I think, is also maintenance of equipment. Our all our infrastructure across America, whether it's highways, roads, waterways, etc., conduits, everything's failing. We know that the San Bruno problem was a combination of failing uh, gas lines, but also they had had uh, what's called switching mode power supplies or smart meters, and they actually put electricity down the line to actually test to see if the line was still working. And according to legal action that's going on here in California, it actually triggered off the San Bruno explosion. So, in other words, what I'd ask the question is, were there smart meters? on and when there was a quote a, when the smart meter was trying to send data it actually has to put electricity down into the area so if there was a rupture of the gas line and building up in a home then that could trigger off an explosion it's the ignition so uh, you know it could be I'd say number one just a gas rupture number two you know so, you know way out well, there maybe ruled, an asteroid they've ruled, out a, they've ruled out a gas line rupture and they've ruled out gas, natural gas, and they've ruled out any, anything electrical. They've ruled out an airplane. They've ruled out anything. They, they can't, if they're smart meters, they can't rule out that because there's enough electricity to trigger off an explosion. In fact, the courts are still dealing with this case here in California in San Bruno, and we actually well, had the they, gentleman on about you, that. If you look closely at the pictures that are published, what you will see is that the uh, where the where the hole is, it actually went down into the basement. There's no basement left. I mean, ah, so you know what I'd be suspicious that. about there? You know what I'd be suspicious then if the explosion happened from below? Maybe there's a giant pocket of gas that somehow ignited below the building and didn't come from above, but it was actually below because we know that there's gas releases everywhere. Uh, not just in uh, different parts of the country, but all over the world there's gas accumulating coming up like... Uh, you know, for example, in uh, the Salton Sea here in California, there's giant releases of hydrogen sulfide and toxic smelly gases, and they're not from dead fish or they call playa at the bottom of this now drying up uh, artificial yeah. salt and sea. I think it's gases coming up that are explosive. No, and there, they're was, accumulating there, was no, there was no odor of gas. Nobody reported any odor of gas. And if you well, maybe maybe, pictures, it, maybe it didn't. Yeah, maybe it didn't it, accumulate up and in, in seep into the house, but it, it was down below it. <laughs> well, you still have to have an ignition source. In any case, if you look. Yeah, exactly. I'm just asking pictures. questions because yeah, if that's you look really at the strange. Pictures, though. all you see is a fine dust that spread out from the from the impact point. That's all you see. Really? Yes. You well, that's really any, weird. You don't see any walls. You don't see any house. And the only thing you see is that there was a fine uh, dust like sand that was spread out from the impact point. Wow. That's really strange. That's really strange. And it certainly sounds like a fireball to me. I think one of the meteors from this comet, this comet, El El Elke, is uh, implicated in the Tumkuska event in Russia in, two th in uh, 1908, 1908. Ah, it has a debris field around it too, right? Well, they think that a fragment from that comet was the, uh, yeah, it was the thing that exploded over northern Russia, Siberia. Oh wow, that's really interesting. The gravel that comes out of the turrets is very 
it's gravelly sized, whatever that means, and uh, but it's very hard, and so it would burn lower in the atmosphere than, for instance, the Orionids, which we yeah, because in October those are more like uh, flying pieces of of uh, foam sponge, but the yes. uh, Torrids are more like uh, real hard, like uh, like iron pyrite rocks. I guess would be the better yes. way to describe it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, Alexander, what's happening now in Mexico? What's going on with the uh, gathering uh, plans by the Chinese probably within 8, 10, 12 years to invade America? What's going on in terms of the drug war down there, and what else do you have to report on? Well, they, uh, I, I believe they just arrested in Guatemala two of uh, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's uh, people. Uh, what we do have so far in Mexico is that uh, President Felipe Calderon and his entire, ca- entire cabinet, as every six years, stole a lot of money from the Mexican people. That means uh, the money that's saved up in the supposed Central Bank of Mexico, which is uh, the, the real Bank of London of Mexico. That's the real official name, which is a private institution. Anyhow, uh, the money's not there. So he's leaving the government basically bankrupt, as they do every six years. So the new president, um, who has a diminute IQ, Enrique Peña Nieto, will be coming in on the December 1st uh, into a country that is ultimately destroyed economically. We'll see how Mexico, Mexico recuperates from this um, uh designed bankruptcy in order to trigger a massive devaluation of the peso against the dollar. And basically, we also have this psychosis going on in Mexico City and in, um, in what is the, the biggest uh, the, the biggest transnational movie chain in Latin America, Cinepolis, uh, Cinepolis, basically is having shootings inside their movie theaters right now in Mexico City. It's all this week. Many people have been shot at random during uh, various uh, viewings of different types of movies, and even uh, a baby was shot uh, this week. So You're kidding. Right? It's funny. We never really get news outside of America. It's very myopic about this and the country's right beside us, Mexico. It also you know, what happens in Mexico is really gonna impinge on America, but Americans seem to be just not paying attention, do they? Mexico is the appendage of uh, Mystery Babylon, I believe. Uh, I mean what happens in the US is rep- being replicated here. So yeah, Mexico yeah. is uh uh, sprouting a new form of left-wing, uh, anti-God, pro-abortion, pro-gay, pro-lesbian attitude. And now we're seeing that society as a whole is collapsing uh, morally and ethically. And you have these random people copycatting, you know, the Black Knight uh, shootings up there in Aurora, Colorado. Yeah. But, you know, I, I have a kind of an alternative view. I know that there's elements of society that are kind of manipulating and even the re-election of Obama, but if we had even any reasonable conservative candidate here, they would have been elected. It's very obvious. The same way in Mexico, uh, the drug war is partly tied directly to the London bankers, etc., so they want to have chaos. But most of the people in Mexico are really pretty conservative. Uh, So... To me, in other words, I, I don't uh, buy that the idea that society is going down, down the toilet. They want to tell us that, so we'll buy into it. Welcome back. And uh, you mentioned on the break something really remarkable, Alexander, the, that the population of uh, Tijuana, which is just south of the U.S.-Mexican border, uh, is around... Flo- population 2 million, floating population 3 million, and a quarter of the population are addicted to drugs, including this uh, latest drug from Russia called Crocodile or Crocodile uh, that even has gasoline in it. I mean, I consider drugs uh, a form of eugenics. And I don't want legalized drugs. What I do want is not prosecution and imprisonment of people that use them. I want it medicalized so people get tested, and if they're positively tested for it, they uh, then get put into therapy. It's real simple. This is what uh, they did in British Columbia, and they discovered it years ago. This is the way you approach it. You don't approach it with a legal system with guys with flak jackets banging down doors and everything. What you do is you go after the drug distributors with even more aggressiveness. You have to bring in special forces in Delta uh, with the help of the countries like Colombia and Mexico and elsewhere, and you go after the guys with incredible aggressiveness, uh, shutting down bank accounts and doing other things rather than the fourth richest man in the world is living in Mexico, one of the largest drug dealers on the planet, 
And uh, when you tell me a quarter of the population just south of the border is addicted, this is genocide. That's what that is. And it is. Any uh, country right that does this. Children, and any, uh, as young as uh, 11, 12 distributing inside schools. It's and by the way, people talk. People say that marijuana is safe. I beg to differ. Marijuana nowadays is like Afghanistan black hash on steroids. These new versions of marijuana are medical marijuana, especially are with all their delta nine THC concentrations and other uh, cannabinoids. Uh, you could eliminate the uh, hallucinogenic ones, and they have a drug called Chemet in Canada used for nausea and cancer and so on. But people don't want that. They don't want medical marijuana where basically the hallucinogens are removed or the things that literally cause you to feel like you get sensory motor changes or judgment the distance changes that can make you dangerous operating equipment or a vehicle. That's why I think this idea of states like Colorado doing it and saying, well, we're going to do a blood test when you kill somebody in a car, uh, I think it's stupid. And I think it's uninformed people that make the idea that thinking that we just need to make drugs legal, like this moron, uh, Jesse Ventura. And Jesse Ventura, to me, is a big most idiot. Uh, when he makes statements that everybody should have the liberty to do anything they want as long as it's, quote, not a crime against anybody else. If you're trying to commit suicide, you need to be committed. If you're drug addicted and you're driving your body, which will affect your family, your fellow citizens, people operating equipment, anything, your behavior, you could be having a hallucinogenic fugue and have a weapon on you. Or you're not a weapon, just a broken bottle. I mean... Well, you can't have people walking around stoned. And, influence is considered yeah, a crime. You, and by the way, I also think that the same thing needs to be done with legal drugs because legal drugs can be just as dangerous, things like benzos, etc., as these illegal ones. And we need to deal with that issue of medicalizing it and stop criminalizing it. But the criminals that distribute, they need to get either in jail or dead. Well, in the Russia, other. the epidemic of this new substance, because they, don't, they can't afford a heroin anymore, it's crocodile uh, with K, crocodile. You just go on YouTube and, and do a little research on crocodile. You'll find out what it is because the skin of the addict turns into croc. It looks green and starts falling off uh, by pieces, okay? Oh, you start dying from the inside out. You start rotting out. And basically it's a codeine mix. Uh, it's a synthetic opiate. And uh, I, 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 I pulled it up. Yeah, yeah, they grab coating, gasoline, paint thinner, iodine, hydrochloric acid, and red phosphorus from the from uh, the striking pad of matchboxes. See, so they mix all that stuff and they inject it into their veins. Yeah, it's called desomorphine. Uh, and it's not been invented in 1932 in the United States as a derivative of morphine, where six hydroxyl groups has been removed and the 7 8 double bond has been reduced. It's a sedative, analgesic, and around eight times more potent than morphine. Oh, my gosh. Yes, and that's why we have so many people jumping across the border buying oxycontin uh, in Mexico without any prescription and then taking it to the States. I mean, this is an epidemic waiting, a uh, pandemic, a drug pandemic waiting to happen. Uh, yeah. Just, I mean, it's horrible. Yeah. If you really see the case, uh, the case, uh, the cases in Takeshistan and all the Stan countries, you know, uh, north of Afghanistan and, and west of Afghanistan and everything inside southern Russia. Uh, this thing, if it hits America and the streets of the United States, say bye-bye to the future generations. This thing yeah. kills in uh, three to four months. Yeah, the street name in Russia is homemade desomorphine. It's crocodile, K-R-O-K-O-D-I-L. Yeah. Uh, reported due to scale-like appearance of skin and all uh, users and derivative of the uh, chloro code died due to the difficulties procuring heroin uh, combined with easy and cheap access to the over-the-counter pharmacy products containing codeine use of crocodile has been on the increase since the homemade mix is routinely injected immediately with little or no future purification crocodile has been notorious for producing severe tissue damage phlebitis gangrene sometimes requiring limb amputation or long-term on long-term users it's uh the amount of tissue damage is so high that addicts' life expectancies are said to be as low as two to three years, especially as they are often highly susceptible to infections and gangrene due to widespread HIV among injecting drug users in Russia. Well, of course, the Russian population are dying from drug addiction. If you go to Moscow, and I've talked to people who have been there recently, it's just over the top. So this idea of people legalizing drugs, you're an idiot. You need to talk to someone like me, who's a drug expert with the MRO, that knows that someone is addicted, like this moron Jesse Ventura, and he needs to get a real-life idea that you cannot commit suicide. You cannot be walking around stoned on your either medical drugs or on illegal drugs and think it's okay to the rest of society to tolerate that. We need to take care of you. We need to get you off the drugs, and we need to monitor. 
And if you medicalize it, you don't put people in prison, expose other criminals, and turn them into a, a criminal and expand the criminal uh, drug cartels. And you don't go and sell the damn stuff and think, well, medical marijuana, which will always goes up. As soon as you legalize it, the abuse of it and the population becomes totally, you know, you get a percentage of people that get totally stoned on it and don't function. Your comments, uh, John. Well, there's different ways to look at this. Uh, you know, people who are determined to cause harm to themselves will do so, regardless of what uh, government intervention has attempted. Uh, that's Real simple. As, that's as old as the hills. I'll give you an example. When we had employees of different companies, and that we were Staples or Office Depot or Department of Defense or whatever, they do a urine drug screen. We do it. We actually monitor. We have a chain of custody. We have urine tests. We have breath tests, etc. You can't fiddle us. I had people do it. You wouldn't believe some of the scams. It was so ridiculous. People come in and said, let's put it this way. I had people come in and I have to do a post MRL positive drug screen, and they'd say, well, da 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 da. I said, just a second now. Just assume now, I'm not Dr. Bill Deagle. I'm the omniscient God. I'm not only the God of the universe. I have drug tests here that tell me right down to the molecular basis of how you're living. And so, no law amount of lying will get you out of this. I said, you don't know the biochemistry. You don't know how long it stays in your body. You're guilty. That's just the end of it. There's no discussion here. You can't lie your way out of this. So, if we simply did drug testing in schools and employers and other places, and then we'd out to monitor people who were positive for these things like Benzoyl or Gonine for cocaine and Crocodile and so on. We'd have health officials and public health nurses visiting them. We'd then have uh, health authorities, if necessary, taking them off in an ambulance in a posy jacket to a drug rehab facility where they'd be taken care of. We just need to decide to, to do it instead of, oh, well, we don't want to take away the liberty. When you get heavily involved with crocodile, which is going to cause amputations, we need to deal with that. We have that choice and making them put, you know, normal citizens again, or we have the choice to stick them in a prison uh, situation, which you know, becomes a permanent ward of the state. It's, you know, it's our choice. What do we do? And uh, I think we have a choice, and we can treat people like human beings that have went over the edge and need help. Um, and that, to me, is a much more logical solution than making drugs legal. It's, you know, by the way, also crazy are, I call, these new things like Halo 2 and these other new video games. I consider them electronic drugs. Your comments, John and Ann and Alexander. Well, well, uh, if you watch people that are using these games, uh, it is almost a, a, a form of hypnosis, uh, the expressions on their faces. Um, uh, they, they, it's very dangerous stuff. They, they go well, into they, theater rhythm. If you measure their blood levels, you'll find they get a surge of dopamine every time they do a kill. So what happens is these people are like the little rat pressing the little bar with the electrode stuck in the rage control and dopamine surge centers in their brain. They're just as addicted as somebody sticking a needle in their arm. People say, oh, no, they're not addicted. They said, you don't understand the Skinner box and the process of operant conditioning. These highly intense video games are changing the brain structure of people. They're changing their brain structure. They're changing the, 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 we call the reward response system. They're changing oxytocin levels. They're changing steroid levels. They're changing everything. They're actually electronic drugs. And if we don't call it that, we're going to have a generation not only addicted to things like aspartame and GMO, but addicted to this stuff. No, the, the, already it's out of control. I mean, I'm, I'm preparing a special conference. I'm going to be lecturing uh, uh, in L.A. It's called Manipulati and how video games and all this and the media and the mass media uh, affect the brain structure. I mean, the brain structure of children is being modified by design. Remember, it's about creating the new unsensitized human, uh, the, the, the drone class. Of, uh, well, we, we see that with the politics. We get offered a Punch and Judy game. I call it the Dance of the Fairies because all high-level politicians are bisexual pedophiles. And uh, then they uh, pick out which fairy we are going to have for the next few years while they do whatever policy they want. Well, you know, CFR Illuminati member Angelina Jolie is bisexual, so she'll probably end up as a senator in the future. Oh, boy. <laughs> Amazing. Well, Dr. Bell, is a liberty man signing off. Yeah, listen to... to